Hi, this is Whisperer Robren. Today we'll be talking about the 12 facts about Brahma Kumaris. This is brought to you by the Robren Show, Insights into Religions. Uh, the author is Whisper Robren. Whisper Robren was the world's second Chinese Brahma Kumaris leader and the co-founder of BK Malaysia in 1981. He was a BK from 1979 to 1989. He's a keen observer of Brahma Kumaris since 1979 as a researcher and investigative journalist. He maintains a healthy but not hostile relationship with BK seniors as a bridge mediator between BKs and their families. Okay, this is the intro. Uh, Robren did not name this article as the 12 rights and the 8 wrongs of BKs. Why? Because what is right and what's wrong is a human belief. Because one man's belief is another man's falsehood and one man's religious practice and habits is another's non-practice. Non one man's re religious diet and food is another one's poison. One man's religious laws is another man's prison. And one man's religious punishment only applies to willing and under or the unwilling, those who are born to a religion. Uh, those followers are uh, so this is not applicable in secular courts so religious laws are not the the uh, civil courts the 12 facts about brahma kumaris one putting women in leadership roles in brahma kumaris organization is an excellent best practice i couldn't uh, admire it and praise it more number two soul consciousness is a good thing but it is impossible to practice as long as we have a human body so similarly there's some religions even try to impose followers not even to think with the seven daily vices for instance like lust jealousy anger and all that so for example in the bible in matthew 5 20 uh, verse uh, 28 to 29 but i tell you that anyone who looks at a woman to lust after her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to sin, gouge it out and throw it away. This is better for you to lose one part of your body than the whole body to be thrown into hell. That's quite strong. Now, if we were to be thrown into hell for having wiseful and sinful thoughts, then uh, all of us will certainly will end up in hell. So therefore, rather than being so stressed to have only pure good thoughts, which is impossible, it is more productive to naturally transform your negative, wiseful or sinful thoughts into positive thoughts. For example, try to transform your mind, your lustful thoughts into passion. So turn lust into passion so that will inspire your progress. Another point is Robrand experienced many senior BK leaders do not actually practice soul consciousness, but in reality, some, especially BK leaders from India, practice institutional racism and prefer to install Indians in senior positions. Fact 2.2. For example, when Tom and Robert co-founded Brahm Kumaris Malaysia in May 1981, they attracted many regular students. So while servicing all races, after both Tom and Robert left Malaysia for good, many BKs gave Robert insider information that the two most senior uh, leaders, Sister Mir from India and Brother Lecho, local Tamil Malaysian favored Indians. So there was a case of a senior Chinese BK leader that researched and gave 25 property suggestions for a new retreat center, but were all rejected by the two senior BK leaders. So they actually chose an Indian BK's suggestion for a place in Bangi, which is actually a least desirable area for retreats because most retreat, natural retreat places are either in on, on a hill or by a beach or on an on island. So there was alleged evidence of cover-up of corruption and construction overcharging by the Indian who sold the Bangi uh, property. So this happened around the 25th anniversary 
uh, of BK Malaysia in around 2006. The Chinese BK leader has since left BK feeling disillusioned. Fact 2.3, you can be 100% sure that a non-Indian will never be a joint administrative head of the Brahma Kumaris full spiritual. Right now, this is all occupied by uh, there was uh, uh, Dadi Ratan Mohini uh, and and also Sister Janti and and a few senior ones. Oh, this is a picture of uh, Tom and Robert uh, in 2006. Uh, Robert is uh, is an older name. Now I use Robren. So sometimes you see Robert, which, which means. That was the name I was using. In fact, they used to call me Brother Robert or BK Robert. Fact number three. This is the uh, a typical Mariadas or principles for Brahmins. So Brahma Kumaris call themselves Brahmins because they're highest caste. So there are 16 principles that regular uh, Brahma Kumari students will, will follow. So fact number three and four. Brahmacharya or celibacy is an, uh, it's an admirable practice by BKs and many religious sectors. But religious, but marriage failure is the biggest downfall of Brahma Kumaris. Many spouse and family members of BK have shared their sad stories of countless marriage breakups as BK teachings and Mariadas, which are very strict by their god Shiva Baba, require couples to behave like brother and sister rather than being husband and wife. For example, Robert's eldest brother Tom and sister Maureen Chen were split up when Tom and Robert established BK Malaysia in Bangsa Kompo, while Maureen went to establish an English-speaking BK centre in Causeway Bay, Hong Kong. Tom and Maureen were the first second double foreigner. Double foreigner means foreign to India and originating from outside the earth because they come from another world. So that's why it's a double foreigner. So number four is vegetarianism is widely practiced by Brahma Kumaris. And, uh, but it's very strict with the Brahma Kumaris because uh, even uh, you cannot eat food outside by by uh, restaurants or even from your mum because your mum may, may be impure and may be indulging in sex. So they're super strict. That's a very big difference between just being a vegetarian and BK vegetarianism. Fact number five, the BKs wake up very early daily for 4 a.m. Amrit Vela. Uh, meditation uh, which is called the hour of nectar or honey because of this and being at BK centers serving there in the evenings and weekends BKs tend to have no social life outside the BK activities and they need to sleep very early number facts six to eight regular BKs attend daily Muli classes Muli means the flute or the Krishna's flute at the BK Rajo centers around 6 a.m. Some students may even join for the 4 a.m. meditation in the BK center. So cult experts uh, such as myself view this uh, as Brahma Kumaris main brainwashing tool to indoctrinate BK teachings and strict Mariadas. Number seven, uh, keeping good company by BKs. As the saying goes, the company you keep colors your life, which is great, which is true. You keep bad company, you have you colors your bad life. So cult experts view this as one of the top three most typical cult characteristics that is of isolating the the uh, cult members from their physical families and friends. You can read about the eight cult characteristic checklists and weird cult beliefs. Number eight, doing godly service at BK centers. The BK centers will push the envelope to involve as much time of their BK followers to do godly service in the form of doing seven day courses or, uh, or karma yoga chores or like cooking or cleaning in the BK centers, or they are told to processize uh, BK beliefs through free public talks and retreats. As a result, the families hardly see their BK uh, family members and, and, the, and the children who are BKs. Fact number nine is about finances and BK tithing and donation. At least one tenth of annual uh, produce or earnings uh, are formally taken for the support of BK uh, Brahma Kumaris Bull Spiritual University and its seniors. In fact, uh, when I was the teacher, 
uh, staying in the center, I gave 50% of my uh, income to the BKs because I felt I don't really need it. So, And they are told that you will get uh, fantastic inheritance, uh, heaven on earth and all that. So BKs are encouraged to contribute to, uh, are not encouraged to contribute to other charities only for BK courses. So the amount of money assets and property given to BKs are staggering. That is why BKs can afford to build some of the biggest assembly halls in India and in some cities in the world. For instance, the one in uh, Shantiwan, in Mount Abu, the base of uh, Mount Abu, and also the one in on, on top in the headquarters, Madhuban, is the, I think it's the biggest uh, assembly hall uh, which is pillarless uh, that means the whole oh, oh, is only the is all pillarless uh, in, there's not no pillars in the middle so borrowing from other BKs are strictly prohibited fact number 10 to 11 10 the end of Bab Dada's teachings and Avyak Muli so there are two types of Mulis uh, so the Avyak Mulis are after the death of Brahma Baba on the 18th of January 1969. So uh, that is when uh, Bab Dada comes into the chariot of Daddy Guza. Before that is called Saka Mulis, uh, which is before, uh, before 18 January 1969, when Brahma Baba is a chariot for Shiva Baba. So only recordings of past Saka Mulis and Avyak Mulis are repeated. There will be no new knowledge of Gyan from Bab Dada because since he's not, he's not coming in back anymore since the death of the chariot. That he goes out on the 11th March 2021. So 11 is going on annual pilgrimage to Madhuban, which is the Brahma Kumaras headquarters in Mount Abu, Rajasthan, India. BKs no longer can meet Bab Dada. In fact, I met Bab Dada many times, uh, one to one those days, because uh, I was the second Chinese in the world to do this. So uh, I had many wonderful messages from Bab Dada. Uh, that sustained me in my faith in this or in the faith for BKs. So BKs can no longer meet Babda because he's no longer coming back. <clears throat> Fact number 12. Babdada is a twin soul and most religious founders are twin souls. From Whisperings with Angel Brenda, most religions are founded by twin souls. For example, the soul of Christ entered the body of Jesus and established Christianity. So the Jesus Christ twin souls will reincarnate, you know, again, as senior leaders, maybe as a pope, maybe as, uh, as uh, a, a bishop or something, something very high up to sustain the religion uh, for, uh, for the last 2000 years. Another example is the twin souls of Gautama Buddha. The souls of Buddha, the enlightened one, entered the body of Prince Sihatha Gautama when he claimed he was enlightened. So that's when the soul of Buddha came into the body of Prince Sihatha. So third example is a twin soul of uh, Angel Gabriel and appeared to Muhammad. So that, uh, that is the twin souls. And the fourth and more recent, because these are all uh, 2000, 2000, 2000 years ago, 2004 years ago, the, more, the fourth and more recent example is when the twin soul angel Baroni visited Joseph Smith uh, on numerous occasions beginning from September 21st to in 1823 and even gave some golden plates, uh, tablets. Fact 12.2, uh, Robren now realized that his joining Brahma Kumaris did not just happen by chance, by random chance, nothing happens by chance. And from his whisperings with Angel, Brenda is given visions that as twin souls, the souls of Brenda and Robert were deeply involved at the beginning of the founding of some religion. For, for example, Robert can totally re relate to the soul of the doubting Thomas, one of the 12 apostles of Christ. If you know the story, uh, most uh, all the other 11 apostles have seen the Christ resurrected and all that uh, uh, and he was the last one so he refused to accept until he said show me your wounds in your hands and sight as evidence so uh, I, I really relate to that 
So uh, the soul connection with Catholicism and Christianity is deep and strong, e even in this current lifetime for both Brenda and Robert. I was, uh, um, I, I was born uh, a Taoist, uh, Buddhist, and then uh, I went to school, uh, 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 La Salle uh, Christian Brothers School, and uh, I, I really liked the Christianity. I joined the Vanguards, uh, Valen Vanguards, which is a Christian-based youth camp. So that really have a strong impact on me. And, and uh, I became a born-again Christian when I was 14 years old for, for about three, four years before I joined Brahma Kumaris uh, at the age of 20. So the main purpose of the involvement of Robert with Brahma Kumaris was to observe and study the inner workings of a twin soul in establishing a new religion. Therefore, Robert became the world's second Brahma Kumaris in order to be in the upper echelons of BK Foreign Service. So this is a great observation of how twin souls work. That's why I can speak with authority. Uh, on this subject and I've known a lot of information for, for the last eight years. So a vital, a very vital purpose of Twin Souls Robren was to provide a check and balance of Twin Souls religion and their leaders. So that's why uh, Robren witnessed uh, the death of the last chariot of Twin Souls Baddara on 11 March 2021. Uh, in fact, I was the first to write about it. It was not even in the media news. Uh, I wrote that there are nine implications about that. You can check out in the uh, description uh, of, 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 what, of the Bab Dada, uh, or rather the death of Gedi Guza is the end of Bab Dada. And there are major nine implications of, for the Brahman Kumaris. So thank you very much, uh, Whisper Robren. Here's uh, with a big thank you, and uh, we are, I'm a catalyst for change. Uh, we provide you the most powerful, game-changing, inspirational media. Uh, it's very important for me. I'm humble and grateful to be able to be a part of your journey. We will meet again. This is Robren. Check out our, like our pages, uh, like, uh, subscribe to the Robren Show, and I'll see you again. So um, this is an objective review of the... 12 facts about Brahma Kumaris. So coming up is the eight delusions of the Brahma Kumaris. Thank you.